Okay, so in their New York Times bestseller, Lincoln's Last Trial, ABC News Chief Legal Affairs anchor Dan Abrams and bestselling author David Fisher unearthed a little-known chapter from the life and career of one of America's most respected presidents. Well, the team is back at it again. Now, in Theodore Roosevelt for the defense, the courtroom battle to save his legacy, the duo returns to resurrect another case in presidential history. Dan joins us this morning to tell us more about the 1915 libel case brought against Teddy Roosevelt that rocked the nation and American politics. Good morning once again, Dan. Hi, Carly. We had a chance to talk last year, of course, about the book about Lincoln, and it's so interesting. I don't know whether to feel comforted or what I feel about, you know, you think of the, the political climate today and how the media and, you know, there's just always this fighting going on. It sounds like it was, this is nothing new. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no question that the the fighting and the backbiting and one of the the big issues that comes up in this case is money and politics yeah. um, and how to deal with uh, very wealthy people or corporations having too much influence in politics which is an issue that we uh, we face today yeah so tell me why was this uh, it, I mean it seems like the way you kind of go about this story is the same way that you did with the Lincoln um, you know novel as well so kind of piece this one together for us. I mean, is that pretty similar where you looked at transcripts again and kind of just made the story come to life? Yeah, I mean, look, this is all real stuff. I mean, this is the transcript of the trial. Uh, it's over 3,000 pages um, that we take out the, the most exciting moments. We, we took newspaper coverage from the time to sort of add color to what was happening uh, to tell the story of this case where the former president of the United States, this iconic Theodore Roosevelt, was on the stand for eight days in 1915. He had moved to Syracuse, New York for six weeks to defend himself in this case. Um, and he'd been accused of, of libel by the head of the Republican Party, uh, who he had called corrupt. And William Barnes sued him. And it is just an amazing story and an amazing trial. And when you think about what a spectacle it was at the time of the former president testifying for eight days, Franklin Roosevelt testified in his defense. I mean, it's just a great trial. And we do try to, to, to bring it to life using all this source material. Do you think these will ever go? You're a TV guy too, Dan. I mean, could, are we ever going to see this maybe on the small screen or, or big picture? I mean, again, these are just such fascinating stories. I'm surprised that it's taken this long. I know a lot of people are hearing these for the first time. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we are uh, certainly evaluating uh, <laughs> the TV and film rights uh, to the story, but there's no question that it's a made for uh, the screen, whatever size, small or large. Um, story when you have the former president of the United States. And, and part of what makes it so interesting is Roosevelt's life in Syracuse during this time. Think about it. He isn't just the former president of the United States. He is one of the best known people in the world. He is iconic. And he's moved to Syracuse for the trial. And he's staying there a lot of weekends and interacting with people and going to church and that's part of what we, we talk about in this trial, is not just the trial itself, but also the life that Theodore Roosevelt was living uh, for this six-week period as he was defending himself. All right, Dan, congratulations again. We know it's going to be another bestseller. We look forward to chatting with you next year to see what you have up your sleeve then. Thank you, Dan. We all have another one. Thanks, Carly. <laughs> all right.